here we put it all together. <clears throat> so this section is reminding you of all the tests that we've learned to tell if a series converges or diverges, and some strategies about which tests tend to work with which kinds of series. Um, I really, really, really highly encourage you to read the book. It's a really short section. Um, it's got a good summary. It's got lots of examples. It's a really, really good place to start. So I'm going to tell you some stuff here, phrased slightly differently than the book does, so I think between the video and the book, it's, it's a good resource. Okay. However, no matter how many good resources you read and watch and etc., it just takes a lot of practice. You get good at doing this by doing this a lot. That is, after you've done a lot of series tests, you figure out which kinds of tests tend to work on series that look like which kinds of things, and then you get more efficient at choosing what tests to try first. Um, but here are some things that I think might help. Okay. In general, when you first look at a series and you're trying to decide if it converges or diverges, it is a good idea to quickly just apply the test for divergence. That is, make sure the terms of this series are getting closer and closer to zero as n gets big. If they're not, if the terms are not approaching zero, then you know definitely the series diverges. So very quickly you can say, oh, the terms don't approach zero, therefore the series diverges. If the terms do approach zero, however, that doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you the series converges. It could still go either way. So you move on to another test. If you've got an algebraic series, so polynomials, square roots of n, things like that, n to powers, usually what you want to do is compare that to a p-series using a comparison test or a limit comparison test. And the idea is to sort of choose the highest power of n from the numerator and the highest power of n from the denominator, make that fraction, reduce it to simplest terms, so it's in the form a constant over n to a power, and, and compare with 1 over n to that power using either the comparison test or the limit comparison test. That will tell you whether the series converges or diverges. On the other hand, if the n is in the exponent, so you have numbers to the nth power or the n minus first power or the 2 nth power or things like so, um, often a good thing to do is to compare to a geometric series. Again, using the comparison or limit comparison test. Geometric series are easy to tell when they converge or diverge based on whether the ratio has absolute value bigger or smaller than 1. And series that are things of the form a number times a number to the nth power, something like that, um, or a bunch of those added up or whatever, is usually comparable to a geometric series. Again, you sort of take the largest term from the numerator and denominator to compare it to. Sometimes the terms in your series look like a function that would be easy to integrate. If that's the case, just jump right to the integral test. Um, often this is a u substitution integral, but sometimes it's even simpler than that. If the function is easy to integrate, use the integral test. Turn it into an improper integral, and if that improper integral can be computed and gives you a finite answer, then the series converges. If the improper integral diverges, then the series diverges. If your series is alternating, that is, the terms have a negative 1 to an nth power in them, or a negative 4 to an nth power, or something like that, or another strange thing that causes alternate signs, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, right, so that could be like cosine of pi n, or something like this, um, when that happens, you've got an alternating series, and so you can use the alternating series test to tell if it converges or diverges. Now, that won't tell you about absolute convergence, but it'll tell you about convergence or divergence. If you've got a bunch of stuff to the nth, or n squared, or n plus first, or 3 nth, or things like that power, but it's not necessarily all just plain numbers to the nth, uh, you could try the root test. The root test says the you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a n, and that limit is bigger than or smaller than 1, gives you information about divergence or convergence. If the limit equals 1, you the test failed and you have to try something different. If the terms of your series involve factorials, 
and also maybe nth powers, um, or n squared powers, or things like this, you can try the ratio test. And the ratio test is actually, I think, more useful than the root test in general. Often they'll both work, but sometimes only the ratio test will work. Occasionally only the root test will work, but I think the ratio test works more often. Right, so the ratio test, you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus first term over the nth term of your series. It feels very similar to the limit comparison test because you're taking the limit of a fraction as n goes to infinity, but it's totally different because the ratio test involves two consecutive terms from the same series, whereas the limit comparison test involves taking terms from two different series. So again, you try the ratio test, you do this limit, if it's bigger than 1, the series diverges, if it's smaller than 1, the series converges, and if it's equal to 1, well, try something else. Okay, so these are some basic rules of thumb. Nothing is a guarantee, but you just keep trying, and uh, sort of like life. All right, I will see you guys in class.